Yeah. Ah, there we go. Ah, good old couchy. My home away from home. Inside my home. It's even homier. When you sit on the couch, that's when you're really at home. Hey, everybody. Jim here. How you doing? I'm back with some more games. Uh, which is, isn't that just wonderful? What a glorious day when we've got more games. Uh, I got my coffee. And I've got some Famicom games today. And a couple of the games uh, I've got uh, picked out for today that I uh, picked up recently. Um, I think they're appropriate for this time of year. It's uh, We're coming up on Halloween, so they're not horror games, but um, I'd say they're appropriate for Halloween. And then uh, the rest are just uh, some really great games I picked up recently. And everything boxed, too, so... Uh, that's always nice. Some really cool Famicom box art we get to look at today. Um, and speaking of time of year, just, you know, I can say this is one of my favorites. Well, not one of my favorites. My favorite time of year. It's sort of like October Halloween time is my favorite. And then after that, uh, I love sort of the, uh, the holiday season, Christmas, New Year's, things like that. I like fall and I like winter, but I really enjoy October around Halloween time because... Uh, as I think we've established already, I am a big horror fan, so this is a great time of year for me to watch horror movies, play some horror games, and uh, just have some fun. I also have fun at work, too. Um, most of you know I'm a, a teacher, and at the school I work at, we always do something uh, fun for Halloween, uh, to, you know, have fun with the kids, and everyone gets to come in in costumes and stuff, so that's actually one of the things I always look forward to at work, is Halloween and Christmas, because we always do some fun stuff. And then Christmas, we get to do, like, Secret Santa and whatever. Anyway, I, I prattle on. Got my coffee, got my games. Uh, let's uh, do this, shall we? If you, if you got them, drink them. Oh, whatever it is you got to drink, drink it. Is it coffee? Is it alcohol? Is it some other kind of beverage? Whatever the case may be. All right, let's get started with some games. That's why we're all here, right? We're not here to listen to me prattle on about random things. We're here to talk about video games. Unless you are here to just listen to me ramble on, prattle about other stuff, then you're probably going to want to turn the video off now because that stuff's done. Now it's time for the games. Uh, first up, off the top of the stack, uh, again a game, not a horror game, but appropriate for uh, Halloween time. Uh, this is Akumajo Special Boku Dracula-kun. Also known as Kid Dracula. Uh, I really like this game. Um, I like it a lot. I'm a big, big Castlevania fan, especially of the 8 and 16-bit variety. This, not a Castlevania game, just a, you know, more, more of a, just a fun 8-bit platformer. Plays nothing at all like Castlevania. You're, you get to play little Dracula Coon, little kid Dracula, and it's a pretty straightforward platformer. Just, uh, walk, jump and uh, kill enemies and bosses and whatever else. Uh, Dracula, or uh, Kid Dracula, I should say, he starts out with just like a basic fireball attack, um, but as you finish uh, the th different stages, you get new special abilities. You can do charge attacks, so he can turn into a bat and fly around. He can do a homing shot, power shot, all kinds of cool stuff like that. The stages are broken up into um, you know, a few different kinds. For the most part, like I said, it is a straightforward platformer but like for example there's a stage where you'll you'll uh, ride around on like this high-speed roller coaster trying not to fall off as enemies come at you there's a quiz show segment where the Statue of Liberty asks you questions um, if you can't read Japanese there's some trial and error there but this does have an English translation and it's also been released as part of some sort of Castlevania collection I think uh, so that's cool so everyone can uh, enjoy this game now um, and there's also the, the Game Boy game, which is uh, pretty fun too. But this one, I wouldn't say, I, I would say don't expect like too much out of the gameplay department in terms of like, it's not a fast playing game. It's not a terribly difficult game either. Um, it's a more leisurely, kid friendly, um, but still very fun uh, platformer that I like a lot. I like the, the graphics. I mean, there's plenty of slowdown and flicker, but I think that's because um, the character sprites are like so big. They're pretty big, detailed character sprites, especially Dracula Kun. Um, his character sprite is pretty big. His face has like a lot of expression and everything. And the various monsters and 
uh, enemies, they also have like a lot of detail in their um, in their designs. It, it's not like playing like the original Castlevania, for example, where you know what things are. They kind of approximate, you know, a zombie or a person or whatever. Here, though, w way more detail. A very cutesy, again, kid-friendly uh, anime art style, and I like that a lot. And I like the soundtrack too. The soundtrack, um, again, fitting with all the other themes of the game. It's very light-hearted kind of a quirky soundtrack fun again everything about this is kid friendly um, but you can also enjoy it as myself I'm obviously no kid kid at heart maybe um, but I enjoy this game a lot for the graphics the gameplay and the sound design it's a lot of fun and it's a good game to play around Halloween uh, when you're not in the mood for all them blood and guts but uh, yeah it is a great game Akumajo special Boku Dracula Kun good old kid Dracula lots of fun uh, next up, another great game. Uh, I actually love uh, this game. Um, and it's a shame it did not come out in the US. This game was released in Japan and I also believe in uh, the UK. Maybe other uh, uh, regions around Europe too, but uh, this game is excellent. It is new Ghostbusters 2. Um, and I love this game. The The first Ghostbusters game on the NES is, you know, it sucks. And that's really too bad because you think, oh, wouldn't it be easy to make a Ghostbusters game, like an 8-bit Ghostbusters game? Just pick one of the characters, run around, and shoot ghosts with your proton pack. That's not so hard. Um, that's pretty much what you do in this game, though. You pick two characters, and you do have uh, five to choose from. You get all four Ghostbusters, and then you also get Lewis, which I thought was... A really cool like very cute addition because at the end of Ghostbusters 2 Lewis suits up uh, as a Ghostbuster so that's pretty cool so you have five characters to choose from you choose two of them um, your primary character is the one that'll be doing all the you know the movements and using the proton pack and your secondary character follows you around and deploys the ghost trap so you have one button to use your proton pack the other button deploys the ghost trap and it's a top-down uh, action game where you explore the various levels, all taken from the movie. And uh, you go from one section to another, sucking up ghosts and uh, unlocking like new uh, areas to expand the level. And, and eventually you get to the end and there's a boss battle and the bosses are all creatures, uh, ghosts and things from the movie. For example, like the first level takes place in the courthouse. And when you get to the end, the bosses are the Scalari brothers. So that's pretty cool. And you do eventually get to the end, and you fight Vigo. And that's very cool too. But I like this game a lot. It's made by HAL, HAL Laboratories, who always made really great stuff back in the day. Uh, and they made a very simple, uh, easy, like, pick up and play little Ghostbusters 2 action game. And I like it a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's a very short game. It's only like five stages. You'll beat this game in like half an hour. It's not particularly uh, difficult either, um, but it's it's a ton of fun. I like it a lot. Uh, it would be nice if there was like a two-player option where one person controls the beam and one the ghost trap, but unfortunately, uh, that's not uh, that's just wasn't in the cards. One player only, but still, super fun game. Uh, I like the graphics. I like the character designs. They they really did what they could because all you got all these little chibi eight-bit characters. Um, but they did their best to make them look as much as possible like the Ghostbusters. So, for example, Ray, I think he has like his little like night vision goggles on that he had at the beginning of the first Ghostbusters, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so I like the graphics, I like the character designs, I like the uh, little chibi 8-bit versions of the Ghostbusters and all of the ghosts and things from the movie. And also the soundtrack is really cool too. Um, there are 8-bit renditions of a lot of the songs from the Ghostbusters, uh, Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack. So, for example, um, I believe the song is called Flip City by Glenn Frey, and then um, uh, the song uh, by Bobby Brown. I think the song is called We're Back. Uh, but there are 8-bit renditions of those songs and other songs uh, in here, so it's cool. Um, so the gameplay is super fun, I like the graphics, I like uh, the whole visual design, and I like the soundtrack too. It's, it's a great game, again, only released in Japan and I believe in, in just PAL regions. I never know exactly what, because PAL, that covers like a lot of territory, right? That's the UK and that's like sort of like mainland Europe and all that. Um, but it was released at the very least in the UK. Uh, great game, 
uh, if you can, uh, pick this game up. I mean, loose carts of this, even just like on the Famicom, are not particularly expensive. You get this game for like 20 bucks, which I think it's worth. If you're a Ghostbusters fan especially, this is a lot of fun. A uh, really, really fantastic little game. New Ghostbusters 2. Fun stuff. Um, maybe better than the movie. It doesn't take 90 minutes to get through the game. Even though I don't mind Ghostbusters 2. Some people say Ghostbusters 2, it sucks. It's just Ghostbusters again. Uh, yeah, fine, but whatever. I was a kid and I loved Ghostbusters, so I still like that movie anyway. Uh, next up, we're done. You know, none of this has any kind of like Halloween y, uh, you know, sort of horror esque uh, vibes to it, but great games nonetheless. Uh, this one, especially great game. This is a, a Konami shoot 'em up that I believe this was released only in Japan at the time. Um, but this is Crisis Force. And Crisis Force, um, Konami, they really know how to make a good shooter back in the day. The Gradius series is great, and I love Life Force. Um, that's all fantastic. Crisis Force, though, um, not released outside of Japan, and I'm kind of baffled why. Um, if you're going to take the time to release those Gradius games, even though they, they didn't release Gradius 2 either, but Gradius and Life Force... Um, I would think you would want to release Crisis Force because it's awesome. This is a top-down shooter, which there weren't very many Konami top-down shooters. And what's cool about this game is your ship, you can actually morph to different uh, forms with your ship to uh, alter your shot type. It's a top-down shooter. Enemies will come from various parts of the screen, and so you can sort of like change the shape and design of your ship to have uh, different shot patterns. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And this is a two-player game, and something else that's especially cool is when you're playing two players, you have this like sort of like, um, not power meter, but you can collect these sort of power-ups, and when you get enough of them, your ship will morph into this, this like super badass, almost phoenix-looking uh, ship that is like invulnerable and just is annihilating everything on screen. When you're playing two players, though, and you do that, um, both ships will morph into a single super badass ship. Like, they'll do a fusion dance and combine into one ship. That way, like, one player isn't getting, like, the, you know, the super powered up badass mode and the other player is left hanging. Uh, they both combine into single, uh, one single super awesome ship. So that's cool. So it's a fairly fast, uh, fast paced playing shoot 'em up for a Famicom game. Um, it's, it's very fun. It is a solid, uh, you know, tight playing shooter. It's got some great graphics, like really good stuff. There it is again, slow down and flicker as you might expect, but and, and just in terms of color and detail, um, I'd say it's a really great looking game. Again, the gameplay is really fun, one or two players, and the soundtrack is really good too. Something again, you can count on uh, when it's 8-bit Konami. I don't think I've ever played an 8-bit or 16-bit Konami game for that matter that didn't have just an amazing soundtrack. So yeah, when you're playing Crisis Force, you're getting all that, you're getting some of Konami's uh, best work in terms of a shooter uh, on an 8-bit console. Uh, great graphics, great sound, and fantastic gameplay. Uh, this is, I uh, you know, don't like to use the term hidden gem. I don't think very many games are hidden anymore, um, but if you were not aware of Crisis Force, now you are. And now you know you need to play this game if you're a shooter fan, because it's awesome. Crisis Force by Konami. Can't get enough of it. Cannot sing its praises high enough. Uh, with that, uh, that's our little halftime break. Three games down, three games to go. So I'm going to sip my coffee, relax for a minute. You check out whatever the hell I'm going to edit in here, and then we'll be right back. So see you soon. スピードパッチワークそしてカズカズの技これがプロレスゲームの決定版空想してから寝てくださいタッグチームプロレスリング4月2日発売Alright Welcome back everyone uh, I hope you enjoyed whatever it was I put there. It's probably some sort of old advert or something. Sometimes I go a little off the rails and put something weird there. I don't know. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed. Back now, fueled by coffee, ready to talk about some more games. Next up, 
Um, this, an amazing game in the Kunio Kun series, sort of the, uh, the River City Ransom series back in the day. Um, a lot of games in this series actually that were only released in Japan. This one, uh, it might be my favorite. Uh, it's really good. It's also, you know, coincidentally the most expensive. Um, man, just what an awesome game. This is Neketsu Street Basket. And uh, the, the title kind of is explanatory. It is a street basketball game featuring the characters from the Kunio Kun series, aka River City Ransom and all that stuff. Uh, Kunio and Ricky and all their pals. Uh, the plot of this game is pretty fun. Um, there's a little opening cutscene where uh, Kunio, uh, despite being a total dunce, uh, somehow uh, is the winner on a game show and the prize is a trip for him and his friends to the United States of America. Uh, so this game marks the first time that Kunio and everyone else, they all get to go to America. And what do they do in America? They travel around city to city uh, playing basketball, as you do. And uh, that's it. That's about all there is for the story. So um, basically this game, you have teams of two. Um, and you can select between like a whole bunch of different characters. And then you play some street basketball. But it's Kunio-kun. Um, it's the Niketsu Koko series. So uh, it's, it's wild, out of control street basketball. You thought NBA Jam was crazy. Oh my god, you haven't seen crazy yet. Um, in this game, you can, I mean, for starters, you can beat the hell out of the other players. There are no fouls or anything. You just punch and kick and do suplexes, whatever you want. Pick up items and bash each other's heads in with it. Um, speaking of items, you can grab things like ladders and stuff like that. To uh, You can jump on the ladder and then jump off of the ladder for dunks if you want to, or jump off different parts of the environment. Um, there's no out of bounds. There's just no rules, period. Um, so that's fun in and of itself, and something else that's really cool is this game also will have, uh, it introduces multiple goals. So what I compare this to, when I was a kid, MTV used to do these really fun things called Rock and Jock, where it would be like uh, usually music celebrities, actors and stuff playing sports with uh, professional athletes. So each team would be a mix of celebrities and athletes. And when they would do the rock and jock basketball games, they would do these uh, these periods of the game where they would introduce extra goals where if you get the next highest goal, you'll get like 10 points. And if you get the, the highest goal, it's 20 points. And if the ball somehow like drops through multiple goals, you get all those points. Um, they do that in this game. So there'll be like your, your standard goal, a goal that's worth maybe like five points or something, and then the high up goal is worth like 10 points. And if you can get, you can get the ball like to the top goal, like do like this super skyrocketing dunk or a big uh, like kind of like three pointer, and it'll go through all three goals and you get all those points. What also you can do is you can knock the, the goal off of your opponent's side, pick it up, and run away with it so they can't score any points. You can even take it, run over, and attach it to your side of the court. And then you can just score more points. You can score in their goal on your side of the court. Um, it's insane. This game is insane. It is some of the most fun you'll ever have playing a basketball game. Uh, as usual, the visuals are great. I love the Technos Japan, the Kunio Kun characters and character designs. I love the stages, everything. This is classic 8-bit stuff. Uh, as usual, a really great soundtrack as well, but uh, the real draw here is just the really wacky, out of control um, gameplay that is just, it, it's so much fun and it's so insane. And I think this is a four player game. Um, so sit down with some friends, play this game and have an amazing time. Especially if you're a fan of the Kunio Kun games, stuff like um, Nintendo World Cup, River City Ransom. Um, even like, uh, I would say like the hockey game, like Ike Ike Neketsu Hockey Boo on the Famicom, stuff like that. Uh, you're gonna love this game. It's amazing. It is Neketsu Street Basket. So cool. Such a cool game. Love it. Great series. Uh, next up, uh, two Capcom games here. Two Capcom games that I like quite a lot. This one, um, I don't know how this one ended up getting the reputation for being like not a good game because I think it's great. I think it's excellent. I think it's one of like the best action games on the NES or the Famicom. 
Um, ladies and gents, it is Street Fighter 2010. And I think where kind of the stigma comes from is that it's a game uh, titled Street Fighter with like no connections at all to Street Fighter, like the actual fighting game series. So I think that's something like people look at it and like that's really goofy and dumb. So that, you know, how could it possibly be good? And I think stuff like, you know, maybe like AVGN or something like that, just sort of like really driving home how difficult the game can be, really kind of put it into people's minds that this isn't a good game. Uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. This is a great game. Um, gameplay is, is, it is difficult. I'll grant you that. It's a tough game, but it's, it's fast paced. It's action packed. Um, you can, uh, I mean, at the start, your attack range is pretty limited, but as you get power-ups, your attack range, like, goes way up. You can hit enemies from way further away. It makes it a lot easier to, uh, take down bosses. It's just, when you die, you go back to your starting, uh, power level. So this is one of those games where it really benefits you. It's kind of like Gradius. Like, if I'm playing a game of Gradius and I'm fully powered up and I'm in the middle of like stage three or four and I die and I have to go back to nothing, it's, you might as well just reset the game. Like, Gradius is like, it's a no death run or nothing. Um, Street Fighter t uh, 2010, I wouldn't say it's like no death run or nothing, but it's pretty close because when you lose your uh, attack power and your attack range, especially, the game gets a lot more difficult. Um, but it is still really fun. Uh, I would say it's like one of those just like high intensity, fast paced, action packed, always something going on uh, kind of games. You're racing against the clock. There's lots of enemies. There's platforming and climbing and all kinds of stuff. Um, it's a really fun, intense 8 bit action game. It's just, yeah, there's no connection whatsoever to Street Fighter. Um, the graphics, I would say, are also pretty damn good. Um, colorful. Um, again, there's like lots of movement, lots of enemy varieties, big boss battles, all that kind of stuff. Good looking game, pretty good soundtrack too. Um, Capcom 8-bit games typically had good soundtracks. There's not like really, like right now I can't think of any like really standout tracks in, in, in this game. It's not like, say like Mega Man 2 or something like that. They have, um, you know, songs in there that like you can remember it right away. I just, whatever it is, the soundtrack here is pretty complimentary to the action, I'll say that much. Um, but this is just, I don't know, uh, a game I like a lot. Like, before I played it, I sort of, uh, avoided it, looking at it like, oh, okay, Street Fighter 2010. Uh, I heard that this game isn't so great. I'll pass on that and I'll pick up something maybe more familiar to me. Maybe another Castlevania or a Mega Man or a Mario. Um, but Street Fighter 2010, if you've never played it, uh, you're missing out. Um, don't be intimidated by the difficulty. And don't be swayed by the fact that it's a, a weird black sheep Street Fighter game. It's still really fun. Great graphics, good soundtrack, fun gameplay. Love it a lot. Again, one of the better uh, action games on the NES or Famicom. Street Fighter 2010. Fantastic game. Don't, uh, yeah. AVGN, as much as I love him, he, he, he sort of oversold the difficulty. Didn't really talk about how fun the game actually is. Uh, last up, another game uh, by Capcom. One of their last releases uh, for the Famicom or the NES. Uh, a really good one too. Um, kind of a really expensive game these days. Um, at least if you get it like this. Like I found it boxed and like in this really nice, very good box. Um, so happy about that. Um, but this is Mighty Final Fight. And Mighty Final Fight, I would say the only shortcoming of this game is that it is uh, single player only. If this was a multiplayer game, if you could get two players in this, um, I would say it, it would be the second best beat-em-up on the uh, NES or Famicom, because my favorite Famicom beat-em-up is uh, uh, Turtles uh, Manhattan Project. I like that game a lot. And I would say behind that you got your your Double Dragon 2, your River City Ransom, those are really good. Um, I would say this would be the number two beat em up on the console if it was two players because the gameplay is fun, it's really smooth, it's uh, pretty standard beat em up stuff, just walk to the right, beat everybody up, but you got some special attacks, you've got like a power 
power meter thing where you can do like a uh, power attacks and things. Um, you get some weapons and what have you. So as far as like a beat em up goes, it's just a very solid playing beat em up. Very fun. The graphics are great. I love the chibi character designs. They're very nice. They take a lot of the characters from the original Final Fight and then give them kind of a cute, super deformed look. You get all three playable characters. So you get Cody, you get Hagger, and you get Guy. And uh, they all look great. They all play great. So this is a good looking game. It's a fun playing game. And the soundtrack is good too. Um, actually, I would say the soundtrack here for me is probably better than the actual original Final Fight soundtrack. It's really good. It's uh, a little more uh, high energy, um, a little bit more like fun, I guess you could say. I think when they were making this game, it seems like every time like maybe a company made like a super deformed, kind of cuter version of a game, they put like a lot of effort into like, the visuals obviously, but the music as well, for the music to like complement the, vi the, the visuals and give you that sense of like maybe a more lighthearted, fun adventure, something to that effect. So the music is really good. The graphics are great. It's a colorful game, detailed, big character sprites, really great character designs. And again, the gameplay uh, is excellent. Just a really nice, solid playing beat em up. Again, I think it, it plays uh, better than Double Dragon 2 does. It's, it's uh, not quite as stiff as Double Dragon 2 is. It's a lot more um, responsive. Um, but again, just the major failing is that it's not two players. If it was two players, then I would have this as my number two beat em up on the console. But as it is, I would rank this mm, as a single player experience. It's better than Double Dragon 2. Um, but I think uh, just without that multiplayer, I'd, I'd put Manhattan Project as number one. River City Ransom is uh, number two for me. And then probably Double Dragon 2 and then Mighty Final Fight. Uh, there's a lot of competition. There's some, some good beat-em-ups on the uh, the old Famicom there. But yeah, uh, great game. I understand it's a really expensive game these days, at least on the NES. If you pick up the Famicom version, actually, if you pick up a loose cart, it's not a particularly expensive game. It might be at the high end, like a $30 game, between $20 and $30. Bucks. If you pick it up boxed and in good shape and everything, it's probably close to like $80, $80 or $90, bucks, which is still not cheap, but way cheaper than the U.S. version. Uh, I can guarantee you that. Um, but yeah, fantastic game. I like it a lot, and it's well worth playing if you get the chance. It is mighty. Final fight. And it's awesome. For me, it's undeniably awesome. I just wish it had uh, two players. It would be a, a much better game with two players, but I guess just with the, uh, the size of the character sprites and the number of characters that you can have on screen at, at one time, um, all that stuff would have to be sacrificed if you had a second playable character. Probably be a you know, slower gameplay and more flicker and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I guess it's maybe it's for the best. They wanted those cool graphics and everything. So they have to sacrifice some two-player action. What can you do? Anyway, I go on and on. Uh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen and others. We have uh, half a dozen Famicom games there. Fun stuff. I've uh, been uh, enjoying playing those recently. Uh, let me know down in the comments. Uh, one, what are your experiences with any of these games? Did you enjoy them? Did you not? Let me know. Uh, or any of these games on your wish list? Do you have a Famicom or NES wish list? Um, that's something I'm always interested to hear what people are playing or what they want to play or what they've never played, etc., etc. Actually, kind of helps me when I'm uh, picking up games for other people. I know, kind of like, uh, you know, what are the more desired titles out there? What if someone opens up a box for me and they pick that game up? What's going to put a big smile on their face? So that's very helpful too. Uh, anyway. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is having an awesome October, uh, watching some horror movies, maybe playing some horror games, and just enjoying the spooky season as much as I am. Uh, but with that, uh, I think this has dragged on long enough. So everybody, thanks for watching, and take care. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.